slide deck here. Um, wonderful. So we are introducing you to the new design interface. So the benefits of um, the new design tool. So you're going to be able to design a lot faster using the Aurora redesign than our legacy design tool. Um, your 2D and your 3D view are all going to be in a single interface. Your site and your system modeling are all going to be a single in a single interface. You don't need to switch back and forth. Um, you'll be able to get uh, easy to access information to edit um, uh, any of your components and you'll be able to auto string which we'll go over. You'll be able to quote easier. Um, your uh, energy simulation and offset will be in a single page. You don't have to go anywhere else. You'll be able to use a split screen uh, view to um, view uh, a map view or street view um, and you'll be able to uh, do a 3D visualization. Um, we'll also be able to design better. So you'll be able to visualize irradiance on both modules and on the roof as separate uh, pieces. Um, for uh, You'll have fill zone and fill roof face um, features that will allow you to simplify your design. There's also a 3D ruler tool. Um, and of course, we've got a ton of resources for you to get help uh, integrated into the tool. So if you click on that uh, little question mark icon up there, you'll be able to schedule a screen share session uh, whenever you need. We have specialists in all areas of the tool. Um, so we are really, really excited to share all this with you, um, but I know that uh, some folks are needing to leave quickly, so uh, I'm just going to dive straight into um, the meat of our presentation today, and we're going to um, demonstrate what it looks like, compare and contrast between the old uh, legacy tool and Aurora redesign. So I'm just going to create a project today. We're going to call this John Akey's uh, redesign. And our customer is going to be Joe Solar. Um, we're going to do residential for today, but um, you know, if you are a commercial um, person, there's uh, some additional commercial features uh, that you can see up here in our learn video section. You can also reach out to us if you would like some uh, additional uh, training or support. Great. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to do, uh, I'm going to create a project in our legacy tool. Wonderful. So um, let me go ahead and uh, get some uh, HD imagery loaded up. Okay, so this is the uh, legacy design um, site model tool um, that many of you will be familiar with. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw out our roof face. Um, and uh, let's just go ahead and outline this roof. So this should be familiar to most of you just clicking on um, to place a node on every single corner of every single roof face. All right, and so now we've got the roof outlined. So this should be pretty familiar um, to most of you, um, whether you use the legacy or the new design uh, redesign tool. Um, but one of the things that I want to emphasize is just sort of moving things around uh, here in the legacy tool. If I want to recenter, I need to click on a tool to recenter. If I want to rotate, I'll need to click on a tool. Uh, to rotate. Um, if I want to move into 3D view, I actually have to um, reload the entire project um, to move into 3D view here. So um, that is uh, just something I want to show you while we are here in the legacy tool. Now I'm going to create uh, our redesign. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, just to show you up here, um, this is the uh, redesign um, 
tool, this is where you need to go. Um, for right now, we are still opening by default in the legacy tool, um, but that will be changing soon. So just a, a quick heads up. Uh, now that I'm here, um, I will go ahead and uh, outline the roof the same way that I did before. Our tools now are going to be over here on the left hand side. Um, and so I will uh, pick our smart roof tool here. And uh, just a quick preview, um, this is our flat roof section. So I know we had a question about that. This is how I would design a flat roof, uh, but I'm going to choose my pitched roof. Uh, for this particular project. Oops. Great. So, just going to quickly outline our roof here. Uh, basically, the same way that you would in uh, the legacy tool. And there we go, we've got our whole roof here. Um, but here, now that we are in the Aurora redesign, um, I can actually transition uh, between um, 2D and 3D mode very simply and easily. So I am just going to use my right click or my uh, two finger click if you're on a, a Mac trackpad and easily move uh, and rotate between 2D and 3D modes. Um, I can also use this uh, cube up here, this navigation cube. Um, I can uh, hold down spacebar, click and drag to recenter. Um, I can scroll in and scroll out. All of that stuff I can do easily uh, also up here, recenter. Um, all of that I can do very smoothly and easily without having to resave anything um, or reload anything. It is just naturally part of the interface. Um, great. So uh, now I'm going to, um, the other thing that I want to show you here in uh, our redesign is um, for our premium customers who have LiDAR, um, you'll see our LiDAR uh, sort of 3D uh, map of the location. That's a 3D map made with lasers. Um, and if I select this roof, I can simply hit fit to LiDAR and it is going to automatically match the roof pitch and height uh, to LiDAR. Um, so that is just an invaluable tool for making sure that you are getting everything accurately. All right, terrific. So now um, let's go ahead and um, show off one other really cool feature of the new design tool, which is our um, draw roof face tool. So let's say I've got a complicated roof like this one over here, um, and I don't want to model out the whole thing. I know exactly where I want to place my modules. I want to place it uh, right here on this south facing roof. Um, I can draw out just a single roof face using this draw roof face tool. Uh, so I'm just going to draw out only the single roof face uh, that I'm going to be using today. And again, it will automatically fit to LiDAR. Um, so I have the uh, azimuth, the pitch, and the height of this roof face uh, automatically. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that out real quick because we're not gonna be working with that primarily today, um, but I did just wanna show you that because I think it's really cool. All right, so uh, now we are going to move back to our legacy tool and we are going to work on uh, adding obstructions and trees. Um, now, this is one of my uh, favorite comparisons here between the old and the new design tool. So um, here I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna add um, a rectangle obstruction. I'm gonna try and trace these out here. Um, so I'm gonna draw this rectangle obstruction here. I'm gonna draw out uh, a chimney here, I'm going to draw maybe some, uh, some more of these vents one at a time. And, you know, I can't uh, in this, you know, I can, I can copy and, uh, and paste, um, you know, if I want to duplicate. But I can't edit um, any of the properties of this obstruction here in 2D mode. I have to transition to 3D mode, save reload, 
resume. Okay, and now I can start seeing, all right, how tall are these? Um, how am I gonna edit them? Let's see, I, I think I probably wanna make these uh, vents flush to the roof. And I'm not even gonna bother with, um, with all of them uh, here. I'm not gonna draw out the rest of them. Uh, I can come here and I can uh, you know, raise the, the chimney height. Maybe that's a three foot chimney, maybe that's a four foot chimney. Um, a little hard to tell, but you know, if I wanted to come here and uh, you know, I wanted to add some more of these vents while we're here in 3D mode, I can't do that. I would have to go back to 2D mode, save everything, then I could come here and I could say, all right, I want to copy and paste and copy and paste and so forth. The same thing goes for our draw tree feature. So I can come here, I can draw out a tree, I can sort of you know, move it around, then come into 3D mode, save. I have to recenter my view, come back here, and then I can edit uh, tree properties by clicking on this object in 3D mode. I can come and I can change the height or the crown diameter um, or what have you. Um, so if I add on some LIDAR here, um, then you know I can try and uh, match this to LIDAR, but this tree isn't in exactly the right place. You know, um, it's a little offset, so I'll have to go into 2D mode to fix that. Um, and it just, you know, it, it takes a while. It takes a while. So I'm gonna come back into 2D mode, save everything. Then I'm gonna, you know, hope that I position the tree correctly. Um, and so forth. Now let me go ahead into uh, our redesign and let's see how easy it is um, to, uh, to do in our redesign mode. So we're going to go ahead and start drawing our trees and obstructions. I'm gonna come over here to uh, my left hand side. I'm gonna add an obstruction, I'm gonna add uh, the chimney here, gonna add uh, maybe one of these roof vents. Um, let's zoom in and I can just naturally slip into 3D mode here. Oh, okay, well that's definitely uh, gonna be flush, so I'll make that flush. I can take this, I can even uh, layer on LiDAR so I make sure that I get the height properly. I can drag up the height of the chimney here or uh, I can edit it here on the right hand side. Um, either way, uh, works very easily and I can just naturally transition uh, again between uh, 2D and 3D modes um, so that I can view my obstructions in real time. If I needed to, I could move this around in 2D mode or in 3D mode, make sure it's positioned exactly right. Beautiful. Um, another thing that I wanna show you is uh, for our premium customers, we have a feature called Detect Similar Obstructions. So this vent here is replicated a million times across the roof. I don't wanna have to copy and paste every single time. So I'm just gonna click here, Detect Similar Obstructions, and the computer imaging will lay it all out for me. Um, it just saves an enormous amount of time um, and works really nicely. The same thing uh, can apply to trees. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna draw this same tree, position it to my best guess, um, but I'm gonna go directly into 3D mode uh, easily and naturally. Now I can move it around here, make sure it's placed correctly. Um, I can uh, use this pull toggle to change the height uh, right here in my 3D view, or I can change any of the properties um, of the tree over here on the right-hand side. Um, so you can see how much faster, how much easier it is uh, in uh, 3D mode um, when 3D and 2D are just naturally um, pulled together. 
Great. So, um, you know, you can see uh, how much time you can save, how many more sites you could model in the same amount of time. Um, now let's talk about designing the system. So uh, let's go back to our uh, legacy tool. Um, we were here in site model mode. Um, in our legacy, we need to move from site mo model to system design. Our uh, system design is on a totally separate page. Um, okay, so now we are in system design. Let's go ahead and add some modules. Um, so I'm gonna use my Aurora sample solar panel. Uh, I'm gonna make my best guess uh, that I'm gonna want maybe two rows and six columns um, in portrait mode and um, I'll have it go ahead and, and string for me. So I'm gonna have the system create that um, for me and then I will lay it on the roof. Okay, so not too bad here, um, but what if I had guessed wrong? Um, I would have to go back, I'd have to edit it. Um, now we've got a, uh, an array. Let's go ahead and add our inverter. Just gonna place that down here. And now we're going to connect the inverter um, to our string, come back here, connect to our string. Okay, so, you know, that is uh, a bit of a slow process, a bit of guesswork um, as far as how many modules are gonna fit here. Um, you know, a bit of manual work in terms of adding the inverter and stringing. Now, let me show you that same process in Aurora Redesign going to come over here to our design. Um, and David, thank you so much for mentioning um, complicated roofs. Uh, I would definitely recommend participating. We actually have a separate smart roof webinar. We don't have too much time today to go deeply into that, um, but I, uh, I appreciate the, the thoughts. Um, yeah, Aram, I'm, I love this. This is just so much easier. Um, great. Uh, Stanley, um, I did mention uh, previously, possibly before you joined, uh, walkways are part of our um, commercial feature, uh, but it is possible to add setbacks um, to this roof. And actually, why don't I do that now? Uh, so here in settings, um, I'm going to add uh, some default setbacks. Let's go ahead and do maybe three feet for um, hips and rakes, maybe a foot and a half for ridges, and I'll do maybe half a foot for obstructions. Um, and then we're going to apply. Um, so this is terrific. Mo modules are just gonna automatically avoid this. And for those um, that wanna make use of this, uh, you can actually uh, do some of this in an automated fashion by setting up jurisdictions in your database. If you would like to know more about that, um, let us know. So uh, Aram, I'm just gonna, I'm going with just some vague, uh, vague settings here. I'm not trying to duplicate anybody's particular um, uh, setback requirements. So I'm going to move now from our site modeling directly into system. And again, this is in the same interface. You don't need to go to a new spot. Um, and let's go to insert panels, modules, Gonna choose my module here. If I wanted to add a microinverter or DC optimizer, I could do that here. Gonna choose my orientation, and I'm simply going to fill roof face. And boom, there we go. It's completely um, built out. It's gonna cram as many modules on there as possible. You remember previously, I had to do guesswork. Here, it's totally automated. Additionally, let's look at this. I'm just going to use box select. That's left click, hold and drag to select the entire array. I'm gonna come over here to the uh, right hand edit bar and I'm just gonna hit auto string. I'm going to choose my Aurora uh, in sample string inverter. 
um, I'll be able to choose my ACDC ratio, string length, min and max, and just hit auto string. And the entire process is done for me. Um, I don't need to worry about it. Um, so Andre, uh, setbacks um, on one side of the roof face instead of both sides. So you'll be able to choose your setbacks um, based on eaves, hips, rakes, ridges, and so forth. Um, I, I hope that answered your question. If not, possibly we can address that uh, at the end. I do want to keep moving along. Um, so here we go. We have um, just the entire uh, array already built for us simply and easily. We also have uh, the fill roof face mode. So uh, I'm going to come here. I'm going to choose fill roof face and I'm going to select the entire uh, roof face over here. Let's go ahead and, uh, and string that as well. I'm going to come here, hit auto string. Boom. And it is done for me just like that. Um, so very, very simple to, um, to design even massive systems uh, in Aurora redesign. Um, great, so uh, let's go ahead and keep moving. Um, Stanley, I, I appreciate that, um, but let's, let's go ahead and address some of the more detailed questions at the end of the call, and if we don't have time, I'll be happy to, to loop back around with you uh, with a ticket. Um, great, so uh, let's um, take a look now at how we um, analyze production. Um, so in our uh, Aurora uh, legacy tool, um, we would have been here in our system design. We've completed our design, and then we would need to move to another new tab uh, for performance. Uh, and we could come here and we could simulate uh, the production. Let's go ahead and wait for that here. Uh, yes, RM, we do have Solar Edge available. That includes the ability to add um, optimizers. Not a problem. Definitely something we can do. Great. So that's what that looks like in our legacy tool. We've got three different tabs here site model, system design, and performance in Aurora Redesign. All of that is in a single interface. So here we are, um, we've just finished designing our system and we can come up here and easily simulate production. All in the same interface. Um, and we can see here all of the same uh, data that we saw in our performance tab, including our system loss diagram under that advanced uh, tab here. And we can hide it away easily. Uh, another great, yeah, Yash, it, it really makes things so much simpler, so much faster. Another great thing that I wanna show you in uh, redesign um, is our irradiance maps. So we now, uh, show irradiance uh, both on the roof and separately on the modules. So you won't be able to see the full impact of it um, here, but uh, you know, if you ever are designing a roof where um, the modules, like a flat roof or something where your modules are tilted and your roof is not, um, you'll be able to see a really stark difference between the irradiance on the roof and the irradiance on the modules. Um, it's an incredibly powerful uh, tool, not just for your system design, but also for your customer education. Um, speaking of wowing your customers, uh, another terrific uh, feature in Aurora Redesign is our animate feature. Um, so we can actually model the sun's path for every single daylight hour of the year, and we can show that in video form to your customer on the beautiful 3D model that you have built. So imagine sitting at somebody's kitchen table and showing them this. Um, so this is really wonderful uh, as a tool. Um, great, so um, just wanted to uh, open the floor up to questions. I know we've had um, a number of questions, so uh, I'm gonna try and scroll through the chat, but if I overlook your question, um, please give me a wave. Uh, give me just one sec to scroll back through and make sure that I'm, I'm capturing everybody's questions. Um, do, 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 do.
Okay, so um, Jesse, you had had a question about a flat roof. Um, so let's just say there was a section of roof over here that's flat. I could come back here to my site. I could choose the flat section and I could literally just draw a flat section of the roof out right here uh, with no problem at all. And boom, uh, now we have a beautiful flat roof section. I could come here, you know, I could change the height, um, bring it up in line with, uh, with the main portion of the roof or higher or lower or, uh, or whatever it may be. Easily and naturally. Uh, great, so um, I know we had a couple of questions about walkways. Um, so give me a, a little while. I want to address all the other residential questions first, and then we'll move on to uh, to walkways. Um, do, 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 do. Scrolling through. Okay, so um, as far as more complicated roofs um, go, I would highly recommend participating in our um, Smart Roof uh, webinar and um, that occurs weekly and I'll go ahead and uh, post the link uh, to that in our chat box. Um, and that will teach you how to use this smart roof tool um, for residential roofs from the simple all the way to the very complex. Um, and yes, uh, as far as overriding um, uh, uh, Twilk, I apologize if I'm getting everybody's name wrong, um, we will uh, be able to uh, override the measurement on the design. Um, you can actually edit any of these measurements directly uh, over here on the right hand side. So if you want to change the, um, the pitch or the slope on just a single roof face, you can do that. You can apply it to all the different roof faces. You can change the, um, the edge height or length uh, of any individual um, roof edge, all of that is totally editable for you. Um, Yash, uh, option to record the animate feature, that's a, a great suggestion. Um, I'll be happy to share that with the team, uh, be able to export that animate um, feature. That's not currently possible, although of course you can export this as a screenshot or into um, a CAD file. So you can uh, import it into your CAD program. Um, wonderful. Um, Jason, yes, we are done with the demo. We are into the Q&A section. Um, correct optimizer sizing. So Aram, you're going to want to um, use our database tool to uh, make sure that you are selecting your correct modules and optimizers. You can actually favorite all of your equipment so it's easy to access. Um, and then just make sure that you're matching the power levels of your, um, your optimizers and your modules. Um, great, so Jason, uh, whoops, I'm so sorry. I think I posted that link uh, privately instead of publicly, my apologies. Um, Jason, so there is the uh, link to the Smart Roof training. That's for everyone. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Uh, Stanley, yes, the legacy tool will eventually be phased out. Um, that's not going to happen overnight. You'll have plenty of warning um, for that. Um, but, you know, honestly, uh, if, if I were you, I would want to dive directly into the design tool just because it's so much faster and so much more efficient uh, once you get used to it. Um, so Aram, uh, I would be happy to, um, you know, actually I would suggest, uh, I, I'm not sure I, I know exactly what you mean as far as um, stringing the optimizers the way you can in the real world. Um, if you have concerns about that, uh, thank you so much, Aram. Um, I would definitely recommend you give us a little bit of a longer explanation of what your concerns are. And you can actually send us a ticket directly here in the tool. So if you click on this question mark icon, um, you can set up a screen share here by clicking need to speak with support, or you can email us a ticket by hitting this contact us button. Um, and we will be getting back to you shortly. Um, our support team is always here for you. Um, 
Great, thanks, Aram. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, we want to make sure that all of your concerns are addressed. Um, terrific. So, did I get everybody's question? Um, I think I, I think I did, but if I missed anybody, please do let me know. Um, other than our walkways question. Um, Great, so for our walkways, um, so the tool is available right now today. Um, you can simply, when you load a new design, instead of being in this site model, uh, just click up here to design. It is available to you today and I encourage you to take advantage of it right off. Thank you, Gaurav, I really appreciate it. Great. Um, so our walkways uh, are a feature available in our commercial designs. Uh, I didn't create a commercial project today, um, but as I mentioned, for a residential project, um, in our settings section, you can um, add on uh, your setbacks. You can also do some preset setbacks um, in your administrator section in the database up here. Um, you can also, if there's someplace else you need folks not to go in a residential section, you can simply draw an obstruction. You can draw a polygon, rectangle, or circle obstruction. And if you need it to not shade anything, uh, you can just make it flush with the roof really easily. When you are in a commercial project, I'm going to go ahead and save this. When you are in a commercial project, let me see if I can find one of my sample uh, commercial projects here. Um, you can easily add walkways. Um, as soon as this loads, I will show you how. So these are what the walkways look like in the commercial section. Um, in your uh, the system tab in your commercial design, you simply click walkway, choose your width, choose if you want any cutouts, and then you click once to start and once to end. And the tool will automatically avoid placing modules there. Um, and that's that's it. Right side of the roof face and not the left side. Andre, I don't think that is a question um, that I have gotten in the past. Um, pretty much all of the jurisdictions that I've bumped into do require uh, setbacks um, on all, you know, uh, portions of the roof of a single type. So, you know, all ridges would be the same, all rakes would be the same, um, all eaves would be the same. Um, that is a, an interesting um, uh, case study that I, I don't think I've bumped into before. Uh, but what I mentioned before, if there's something a little odd like that, uh, that our current tool doesn't account for, I would simply recommend um, using our setbacks feature um, to, to sort of mock that up. You know, Yash, that is a great question that I don't know off the top of my head. Um, so if you would uh, PM me your, uh, actually, I think you already gave me your email address, so I will go ahead and add that to, uh, to your ticket. Great. And, uh, and I'll have our support team get in touch with you about that, because I, I just, I want to be sure before I give you any information. Wonderful. Okay, does anybody else have any questions that I missed? Um, Yash and Khaled, I will be following up with you uh, after the presentation um, regarding uh, the questions you had about the, the weird bug you encountered and um, Yash for the um, uh, setbacks and the export uh, animation suggestion you made. Uh, so you can, are you talking about, Stanley, are you talking about the um, LIDAR? You can adjust the LIDAR uh, X, Y, and Z offset and or you can move the roof. Both of those are, are open to you. So um, if we are here in our redesign, Let's let's track that down. Great. So if we toggle on our LIDAR, and Stanley, you are um, 
getting into sort of the, the nitty gritties, but uh, if you go here to LiDAR settings, when your LiDAR is toggled on, you'll be able to adjust all the same settings uh, that you are used to in, old, in uh, Legacy. Does that answer your question? Great. Okay, so um, I believe, unless anybody else has any other questions, I believe that is it for us for today. Um, so if you have any other questions, go ahead and type them into the tool. Um, but other than that, we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and wrap up. I really do appreciate everyone joining the training today. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to each of you. Um, and, you know, of course, if you have any further questions after today's call, if you would like um, additional support, uh, just come up here to your question mark icon and hit contact us and you can send us a ticket. Thank you, David. Thank you, Yash. Thank you, Stanley. Thanks, Khaled. Thank you all. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Um, but again, we are always here for you if you need anything. Thanks, Yash. Bye-bye.